Alrighty, welcome to a Lorry for Canvas demo. Today I'm going to walk you through how to launch the Lorry application within your Canvas instance, how to build from scratch, and how to leverage and utilize Lorry template functionality. Let's dive on in. So to begin with, Lorry is an LTI and once installed within your Canvas instance, will be available to the user via the left-hand navigation menu. I'm going to go ahead and launch Lorry now and walk you through how to access and how to use the tool. Now, once you launch Lorry, the first thing to note is that essentially the view that you get is very similar to that of the native modules view within Canvas. And I'm going to flick between two tabs to show you that very quickly. So this here is Lorry. You can see that I've got all my modules and pages there. And this here is the Canvas view. So we can have all my modules and pages there as well. One of the main reasons that we do this is because it gives you an opportunity to actually build modules within that Lorry workflow but also create modules and add pages direct from Lorry templates which will actually streamline your workflow and ensure that you're not needing to launch a tool for every new page that you want to edit and update. At this point I like to collapse the left hand navigation menu just to open up our viewing window a little bit there. I'm going to dive on now into a single page that I have pre-prepared, a blank one, and showcase the actual editing components for you. So I've got a page here, Fun Times, Great Classic Hits. We're going to go ahead and launch that. Now note that this page doesn't actually have any content on it. I'm going to open that exact same page within my second tab here. There's a method to my madness. It's so that I'm able to show you very quickly later on um, how promptly the content that you save from Lori actually appears within your Canvas native page there. So we'll go ahead and open that same page here. And there it is blank no content. Now, what I want to do is introduce you to the concept of how to build in Lorry. We refer to it as a building on Rails experience, or as I more fondly like to call it, a bag of Lego. So when we are starting from scratch, the very first thing that you can do is add a row. I'm going to go ahead and select add a row. And you can see that we have a library of pre-curated row styles available for use. Now, if you as a user go to select a two column row, for example, you'll note that a second tray appears that gives you a variety of options of two column rows and likewise that can be the same for three column rows as well. Now we actually utilize bootstrap functionality for these row styles and that will ensure that they're always responsive across tablet and mobile devices. We do test our templates using Canvas's native teacher and student mobile apps as well and the experience is responsive there too. Now, I'm going to go ahead and select this three uh, column block with all evenly spaced columns for you and insert that in. Now, one of the things I always love to do when I start is turn on my little outline icon, which is present in the top navigation menu. I'm a bit old school and cannot work without a clear visualization of my pattern and my margins. In my very first column here now, what I'm going to do is introduce you to the library of elements. So when I go to hit add on the column, you can see that my little library of elements opens up on the left hand side. Important to note, the left hand side tray is the tray that is always dynamically changing, letting you know what you can change, add or edit at any particular moment along your build journey. So now at this point, you can see that there is a variety available. The majority of these are part of Lorry out of the box, with the exception of Lorry Interactives, which you can just make out there behind my big noggin, and H5P Interactives. These are available to users, but they are considered an add-on, um, and you can discuss that with our Lorry uh, sales representatives if you're interested in getting those added on to your experience or your license. Now, in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and hit my image. And you can see very similar to the experience we had with the multi-column rows, there are a variety of image options available to you out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and select image on its own for the purposes of this demo. 
and walk you through that image workflow. So first thing to note is you will see course images appear. These are images that are already available and ready to use within your particular Canvas course shell in which you're building under the file system. Lorry images is essentially a way to create a centralized repository of images as an institution. And these are images that are actually present in templates which are shared or, um, sorry, shared at the sub account or the global level across your institution. You can also, of course, upload an image from your desktop and the workflow we have in place here will ensure that that image is also saved to your Canvas files. You're also able to insert a link as well. Now, I'm going to head on over to course images and use an image that I've already got in my shell available to me. We'll go for this stair walking one here. Once you select that image, you can hit add. Note that we have built in accessibility touch points within the build process, but we do also have an accessibility checker built into the application that allows you to validate your content as you save to the LMS and or rectify those any issues that may arise. Now, I can go ahead and populate alt text here. I can also tag as decorative as well. So I'm gonna just go ahead and tag that one as decorative. Uh, in the interest of moving forward a little faster. Now, now that I've added this image, I have the opportunity to, in my second column, go ahead and insert some additional copy. So I'm gonna hit text. I've got a variety of text options available yet again. We'll go ahead and header and paragraph. And this is gonna say welcome. And down here, I'm just gonna go and grab some very quality content and pop it in there just to populate that section. So we can go ahead and copy and paste from external sources. You can, of course, go ahead and type your own content. At this point, I often get asked, where and how do I edit and manipulate this copy? And it's important to note that the text editor will actually appear in situ in your journey. So via this little pop-up window here, you've of course got all your options to stylize your text, be it bold, italic, uh, what have you. This is where you can manage the creation of lists, uh, unordered or ordered lists. Also, where you can link to external sources. And of course, we've got available a library uh, of font options. Now, one thing I want to draw your attention to is that these font options can actually be customized by yourselves via the Lorry administrative portal, which comes with every Lorry license. And that will give you the opportunity to choose from hundreds of Google fonts, um, but allow you to set what fonts you would like your institution to use to ensure that there's a consistency across what's being developed for your learners. Now, at this point, what I can do, if I really like this particular section, I can go ahead and actually copy entire columns or elements and go ahead and paste and pop them in other areas. I also have the opportunity to move columns around left and right. So note when I select on my far left hand column that the little menu, menu shows an arrow which tells me that I can move this particular element over. When I select my center column, I've got two arrows because it can go both ways. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this to the left, pop my image here in the center, and I can actually go ahead now and start to duplicate particular sections at the row level. So we'll select our overall row, duplicate and this one here I can go ahead and stylize in a different way. I may want for example the text to be in the center, the image to be far left but I'm going to go ahead and update that image. So all I need to do is double click on that image that's in place and we'll go ahead and change it to this yoga stretching one here. Wonderful again I'm just going to tag it as decorative just so that it updates there for me. I can now go ahead and select the row and manipulate it in other ways. So I have the opportunity to of course play with padding and margin for all of my elements for all of my rows and my individual columns. I can also go ahead and update that to a different style of row if I realize, you know what, the design calls for an additional column. And what will happen is Lori will just move all of your other content over to make way for that change. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this into a four column row because that's what I intended to do. There it is. And note that all of our content just moves on over. What I may wanna do now is just copy this particular area, pop it in and do that. However, I wanna go ahead and change this heading and this is gonna say, contact us for example. I can also do things like when I select those rows, uh, apply border styles and even background colors. So you can see that we have available to us a full color saturation wheel here. There is also the ability to manipulate 
uh, the opacity and of course you do have the option to use hex or RGBA values. Note that there is a little element here that calls for global colours. And these are colours that are actually set at that administrative portal level, which will ensure that all users have access to that same colour palette, again, for consistency and for a really strong brand presence. You're also able to actually omit users from using the saturation sort of palette if you want to ensure that they um, stick to only those pre-approved global color palette items that you've chosen to share. So in this instance, I'm just going to go with that gray that I have there. I'm really happy with that. And you can see that I've started to sort of develop a little bit of a layout and have not touched a lick of code yet. Now, I want to show you how the preview functionality works, which is available here in the top right hand corner. Now, you can see that this displays what that content will look like across a desktop tablet and potentially a mobile device. So you can see all those multi-column designs and my background color that I had applied there um, are all visible to you as a user. Now, what I've shown you is really just the concept of how you would start building with Bori if you're starting from scratch. We often get asked the question, well, what if I already have content in my Canvas course pages? Am I able to edit that? And the answer is yes. Any text, images, media, or other elements that you have already within Canvas, once you launch the Lorry Editor, we will actually fetch and display that for you, and we will populate it within a Lorry row and ensure that it is uh, tagged in this nature. So we will identify image for image, text for text, and then allow you to use the Lorry editor to edit the already existing components, but likewise also to add more elements and components within that editing workflow. So what we have here, again, really just an introduction of how you might build with the tool. What I really want to show you and what I touched on at the beginning is Lorry templates. Now, this is really where you will start to see the value of the tool long term. I'm going to go ahead and clear this page here and we'll go ahead and insert a template that's been pre-built for us. So go ahead and clear that. Alrighty, templates, they will always be available in the top navigation menu. So when you select templates, it's important to note that there are three core categories of templates. So we have our global templates. These are templates that are available and shared with everybody at the institution level. Global templates can only be set by admin users, which means that you would have to log in to the uh, Lorry admin portal, which is available for users via a single button within the tool who are given admin access. And you can go ahead then and search through all the pre-designed templates and establish which ones you would like to make available for all of your users. My templates are templates which follow you as an individual user, irrespective of what shell you're building or in what sub account that shell may be. And then we have shared templates. Shared templates are templates which are shared at a sub account level. So this is a really great way to help establish a set of templates for the Faculty of Art, for example, uh, that you may not wish to share with the Faculty of Science, if that's how you have your sub account structure set up within Canvas. In this instance, I'm going to head on over to our global templates and I'm going to bring in one that has been pre-built in the past. So we've got our CDU landing page here. So this could be a course home page. Uh, as an example, I'll go ahead and hit add because this is the one I would like to use. And I'll walk you through some of the elements that I haven't yet shown you thus far. So up here we have our menu element. This is a really great way of creating almost like a web-like navigation that you can embed directly within your Canvas pages. You can go ahead and set this content so that it links to areas like discussion, student support, um, be it external sites, or be it links within the actual Canvas course shell. And I say that because we've actually integrated the Canvas Quick Link functionality, which will give you the option to link those button or text elements, if you will, to areas within the course shell in which you're working. In order to edit or add more buttons um, or more text options, you can simply head on over to the left-hand navigation menu. And remember, this is the area that is always consistently changing within the application. Hit that drop-down 
down and go ahead and add a sixth element, for example. Then you have the option to update the text. So this is going to be contact us. And of course, to style it if you wish to style it in a different way. So we'll go ahead and make that bold, maybe even italic, just so you can see the difference there. Down here, I've got a banner image in place. Now, when you create templates and share them across your institution or a small team, it's a really great way to establish a style that then users can just go ahead and make updates to certain areas. And for example, having a banner image in place, I now as a user can go ahead and double click on that banner and update it so that it suits the content that I'm actually delivering. So let's say for example, I'm a coding teacher, I'm gonna go ahead and type banner here and bring down all my banner images. And I have one here on coding, which I would like to use for my class. So I'll go ahead and select that, hit add, Flag it as decorative in this demo instance, and we'll add that there. Now note this image is a little bit smaller, but that's okay. When I select the image, the left-hand menu again will show me all the areas that I can edit about that particular element. I'm gonna head on over to size, and you can see that I have a full width field. If I tick that, the image will scale accordingly. Down here as a user, what I can do now is simply highlight text that's already been styled and established for me and update that with the text that is relevant again to my offering and the content that I'm delivering. So this is going to say welcome to coding 101 and for any of you who know me you would um, be laughing at the fact that I was teaching a coding class because I am by no means a developer. Now again just to fill out that bottom page a bit we're going to go ahead and grab some more very quality cat chat here and we can go ahead and add that. If for whatever reason I um, needed to remove this section, I can of course go ahead and remove it. I can also duplicate it if I want two separate text box fields, for example, for my course. I have the opportunity now to also add additional elements. So I may wish to place a welcome video on this page, or there could be instructions for me that say, if you like, place a video here. So I can go ahead and select that column. Again, any column that has content in it, the plus will always appear to open that uh, element library for you and you can go ahead and use additional elements. In this instance I'm going to go ahead and select a video. Again a variety of video styles available to me. I'll select video on its own here and what I'm going to do for the purposes of this demo is actually share a video from YouTube that I have pre-prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that here, head on over to the YouTube field and paste. We'll hit add and note again, similar to the alt text call on the image workflow, we do ensure that you add title attributes to videos to ensure that that content is accessible. So this is welcome to Laurie, meet the CSM. This is Redo, our wonderful CSM. And we'll go ahead and hit add. And there is that video embedded in line for you. If you needed to change the size of that video, similar to what you saw with the image before, select the video via the left-hand navigation. You can see size. We'll deselect full width and we can go ahead and apply maybe 850 pixels wide. Note that the height will automatically scale. That is the same for images and video, just to ensure that users don't break aspect ratio. You can then drop down the alignment and center or right align that video as you so wish. We'll go ahead and center that for this demo. Now down here you can see some additional elements and areas that we've got. So it shows you ways that you could potentially um, highlight areas to ensure that learners don't miss fields. Uh, you can also establish things within templates and then allow users to be able to duplicate them and go ahead and manipulate them again for their course. So this could be weekly reading, and down here they may require a separate section and this is coding languages potentially. I'm just going to go ahead and do a capital C there. There we go. This is an example of a Lorry Interactive, which I touched on earlier, available as an add-on. This is what accordions could look like out of the box for your institution. And an example of image sliders there as well. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit Save to LMS because what I haven't shown you yet is how does all this content look within the LMS once it's been created. Now, We'll hit save to LMS, which is a button there along the bottom. We'll always be present there. Note that as we do save to LMS, we are performing a top to toe accessibility check 
of this page and you can actually see there now that the accessibility checker has the number four against it. If I want to have a look into this and dive in a bit deeper, I can go ahead and open the accessibility tray and it's going to walk me through the issues, the severity level, and also potentially guide me on how to fix. Some can be done via a quick fix, others you'll need to actually go back into the editor and make those adjustments on the spot. In this instance, I'm going to leave those issues head on over to Canvas. Now Canvas knows that we've made a change here. All I need to do is refresh and that's going to load in my Canvas page. So there we go. And again, the content that has been designed is responsive. So it's going to go ahead and scale accordingly. You can see there's our menus element. There was our additional button that we added, contact us, our full width banner, welcome to coding. I doubled up on my paragraphs there. Here's my video in line working beautifully here's my duplication of this particular section weekly reading coding languages and of course this is what those interactives will look like on the page itself now this introduction has been rather brief as you can see when i go over to my elements there's a lot there that I'm yet to walk you through. And if you're interested in finding out a little bit more about Laurie and the power of Laurie templates and how they might help your institution deliver consistent learning experiences across the board, do reach out to us. You can either go to crystaldelta.com uh, and then head on over to our Masterly Education site, or you can reach out to us via contact at crystaldelta.com and book in a further demo and find out a little bit more. Thank you for your time.